Good morning, students. So we'll move on to the uh, next loader type, that is bootstrap loader. Okay. <clears throat> so as I previously mentioned uh, uh, while discussing the absolute loader, so the bootstrap loader who is responsible for loading the operating system for the uh, execution. Okay, when we start our system or when we restart our system. Okay, so that that is the first thing which is done by our system. Okay, once the operating system is loaded, fine. Once it has been executed, then we will be getting a welcome page. Okay, our desktop version will be open, or else uh, the lock screen. We do username and password. Such type of options will be enabled exactly. Okay, so now uh, we'll see what exactly Bootstrap Loader is. Okay, and what are the functions of the Bootstrap Loader? Fine. We need to uh, see one particular program. Okay, who is responsible for reading the content from uh, the hard disk, okay, uh, where we are stored with the operating system files and all, okay, so it should be brought for the execution, okay, how it will be brought and uh, what fashion or what logic we are going to use regarding that we'll be having complete discussion. It's a very simple uh, concept, fine, we are having a bootstrap loader who is responsible for loading your operating system from your hard disk to your <clears throat> main memory, okay. So for the execution exam, that's it. First, we'll go through uh, what is bootstrap loader. So we'll see the definition. A bootstrap loader is a special type of absolute loader that is executed when the computer is turned on or restarted. So this loader, uh, when executed, loads the first program to be run by the computer, usually an operating system, okay? So this is what uh, the definition of bootstrap loader is. Okay, so uh, this is the first thing, okay, which, will, which is done in our uh, system when we begin with our execution or when we begin with our, uh, or when we start our program or when we start our laptop or desktop or any kind of application. Then uh, we'll see what is the working principle or the uh, function of bootstrap loader. So the bootstrap loader works as shown here. The bootstrap loader uh, shown in example 3.3. Okay, we are having a program in next slide. We'll see that what it is. Is written into ROM at the address 0000. Okay, so this program, whatever I'm going to show, okay, so that is written in an address beginning at location 00. So this is the first thing in our ROM example by the manufacturer. So when we are manufacturing our system. Okay, the first thing in our read only memory should be what these particular bootstrap loader. Then the bootstrap loader loads the operating system residing usually in the hard disk into main memory starting at a fixed address 0080. Clear? Okay. So uh, zero is a uh, location where we are having the bootstrap loader. Okay. But uh, for the execution, we are having a fixed location, which is called as AP, okay, address location 0080, where we need to, okay, start uploading the content from your hard disk to the main memory. Very careful, see, your lo bootstrap loader is available inside the ROM at location 0, okay, but when we are loading, when we are trying to load the operating system, we are loading into the main memory in a location 80. Clear? In a location 80. Whenever we load any operating system, it will be loaded in a location 80 exactly. This is fixed. It won't change. Remember. Finally, bootstrap loader executes a jump to address 80 and thus OS will start executing. See, once the complete operating system files being loaded to the main memory, for the execution, okay. Your uh, bootstrap loader, okay. When it find the end statement, okay. When it find the end statement, uh, we are identifying by zero four, okay. Value called as zero four, which identifies uh, hexadecimal value it is, okay. Zero four, which identifies the end of the particular file, okay. okay. When it reach the end of a particular file, then the loader will jump to eightieth location, okay. Why it is so? See, while discussing the object program of assembly level language also, we are having three different files, okay, header file, text file, and end file, is it? End file consisting of 
what the beginning address of the program. In the same way, you are bootstrap loader also. When it finds the end statement, it will just go to the location from where exactly uh, the program begins, right? The program is beginning at 80th location. So it should go for 80th location. Why it is so? Because from 80th, we need to start our program execution. That's why we are loading or we are diverting our pointer to beginning 80 exactly. Okay. Once the OS is fully loaded, the user can start giving the command uh, so as to utilize the resources of the system. Okay. So once the OS get completely executed, then we can start giving the instruction to our system. Okay. So here, a bootstrap loader for SIP XC we are having. Just observe it very carefully. So this is the main program. Fine. This is the main program. Who is responsible for reading the content from the uh, hard disk and placing it to the main memory at location 80. At location 80. See, here we are dealing with only the hexadecimal values. Remember, only the hexadecimal values. So, uh, we need to see while reading, while reading 0 to 9, if you are reading something, okay, uh, that hexadecimal value, what we are retrieving, that will be based on subtracting it by 48. Okay. Uh, but, after subtracting it by 48, if the resultant okay, value is more than 10, then again we need to subtract it by 7 so that we can identify A to F. Okay, hexadecimal value 0 to 9. Okay, 0 to 9. Fine. Then later 10 to 15. 10 to 15, what we are having? A to F. A to F. Okay, so for that we are going to be using subtract it by 48. Okay, if it is more than difference, if difference is more than 10, then go for again subtracting it by 7 exactly to identify what is the particular value. Okay, so now the logic is uh, for reading the content from the main memory. Okay, we are calling a subroutine program called as get C. Okay, get C, the full form of get C is what? Get the character. So here, two times we are calling the subroutine. Fine. First time, we will be reading the first character. Second time, we will be reading the second character. Later, we need to add these two value result. Okay. Like whatever the resultant hexadecimal value we are generating, right? From first read operation, from second read operation. That should be combined as a one byte information. That should be converted as one byte information. Right? Okay. The two digits will be converted into one byte. <coughs> Fine. In such a way that we need to convert. Later, it should be loaded in a specified location. Consider 80, later 81, later 82, like that. Yeah, okay, first. Uh, uh, we are having a label called as a boot. Okay, so just observe. So this is a bootstrap program. Okay, bootstrap program. This observe. Boot we are having, right? Okay, start. Where we are starting at? Zero. We are beginning at zero. Right, this boot program is starting at zero. Then make a clear accumulator register. Okay, whatever the value we have inside the accumulator, that should be reset to zero. Okay, then later uh, load index register. Always you need to remember X stand for index register, A stand for accumulator. Index register. See here in, in this example, we are utilizing it for identifying the location. We are identifying the location, fine. Where it should be loaded. See, you are trying to read the content from the hard disk, right? Who is having the ID called as F1? I repeat, the hard disk we are identifying by code called as F1. Fine? Okay, fine. So now, uh, whatever the content you are reading, so that should be placed in the main memory, okay, which is pointed by the index register, which is pointed by the index register. Okay, observe it very carefully. Fine. <clears throat> okay, so here the index register is loaded with hash 128. If you convert this 128 to hexadecimal, it will be stating 80 exa. Okay, initialize x with hexa 80. Okay, if you are loading x with 128, that indicates that according to hexa, it will be targeting for 80. Means now the index register is pointing for 80. Now what we need to do, we need to read the content from the hard disk and it should be placed in this particular location. Okay, what is the logic? We need to read two characters from the main uh, hard disk to the main memory. We need to add them together. We need to make it as single 
value and that single value should be stored in AT. Then AT should be implemented, index register should be implemented so that it can point for AT1. Then again, same procedure. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Next, after loading index register with AT, here we are having a jump to subroutine get C, get first digit. Okay, fine. First, we'll go for that. Then later, <coughs> uh, we'll be going for, uh, like we, will, we will go for uh, what exactly uh, the get C performing model. Okay, fine. Now, go for the subroutine. <coughs> subroutine to read the character and convert into hexadecimal. Right, convert into hexadecimal VR. Okay, so what exactly? See here, first one, what we, what we are having? Get C. Okay, fine. So this is the label for the initialization of this subroutine exactly. TD means test device. What is the test device? Input we are calling it as. Okay, what is this input stand for? Just observe. Input stand for, okay, input stand for F1. Input stand for F1 exactly. Code for input device. Okay, so we are targeting F1 as a hard disk. Okay, from this, we need to read the content, right? From this, we need to read the content exactly. Okay, read the content to location X. Where it, what is that X? 88 exactly, right? So, input device means F1. Okay, fine. We got to know like input device means F1 now. So, we need to test that particular device. Okay, so whatever. Uh, the return value we are going to get, if it is equal, okay, if it is equal to zero, jump is equal, it means that this input device is not yet ready for the transition, okay. So, if it is equal, after testing the device, if it is equal, get C, means you need to go for waiting load, okay. Once this device becomes ready to go for a transition, here, read input, get a byte from input device, get a byte from input device then later whatever the input you are okay so uh, when we are trying to read this input what is this input exactly input is uh, represented by f1 okay observe it very careful input is we are representing f1 exactly f1 means what f1 is a identification of hard disk exactly if uh, this particular input device is ready to have a transition okay then we need to read that input and we need to check whether the uh, the first byte or the first information or the first character what you are reading, whether if it is equal to 4 or not. Okay, what is this equal to 4? Okay, what we are trying to check over here? Okay, it represents the end of file. It represents end of file. Okay, if we are having end of file, okay, then we will be having capital E. Okay, so that will be represented by four over here that we are trying to verify whether the first parameter of the first byte is whether it is equal to four or not. If it is equal to four, okay, if it is equal to four, just observe, jump equal to, see, we are comparing it with four. If uh, the result and the first character, what you are trying to read, if it is equal to four, then we are satisfying the condition jump equal to. Okay, jump equal to where I should jump. I need to go for AT. Okay, jump to AT and execute OS. You don't have anything to execute over here because in the first character itself, we are finding the end of the file. So, no execution takes place. If it is not equal to 4, just observe, if it is not equal to 4, we are comparing the resultant with hash 48. Okay, we are comparing it with hash 48. Okay, so skip character less than 0. So the difference, whatever you are going to get, the difference, whatever you are going to get, okay, if it is less than, okay, if it is less than 48, okay, if it is less than 48, then go for, go for get C. What is this get C? Again, we need to go for this. It means the first character, what you are trying to read, it is not between 0 to 9 and it is not between A to F exactly. Okay, so that it is what stating exactly. Okay, so hexadecimal values we are trying to uh, verify over here. Be careful, be careful. Okay, then later, uh, if it is not, okay, if it is not less than, uh, uh, like whatever the comparison if you are uh, doing, right? Okay, if it is not equal to or if it is not less than, okay, zero, then what we do, we are subtracting it by 48. We are subtracting it by 48 exactly. Okay, then later, compare it with hash 10, compare it with hash 10 means 
after subtracting the first uh, character value with 48, okay, whatever the difference you are going to get, that will be compared with 10 exactly. If it is less than 10, observe it, if it is less than 10, written. What is written? See here, written we are having here. Okay, R sub we are having, means return to subroutine, means return from subroutine, means we, we need to go for, we need to go for uh, the main program, we need to go for the main program. Clear? Okay, if it is not, okay, after comparison, if it is not less than 10, if it is equal to 10 or if it is greater than 10, then what we need to do, we need to subtract it by 7. Okay, for what purpose we are doing it? To get the value between A to F. To get the value between A to F, we are subtracting it again by hash 7. Okay, so later, as usual, okay, we don't have any option. Uh, the end of the loop, okay, we are, when we are reaching the end, okay, we can observe, we are having one more uh, called as, one more label called as a loop, where we are having loop exactly over here. Okay, so, uh, wait, this loop, yes, it is loaded. Now, when you are returning over here, uh, we need to store the value of, uh, uh, value, value which is available in the accumulator because you are reading the content, right, back to the S exactly. Okay, we are using one more register. For that, we are going to say exactly. So, now, uh, for this uh, register S, which is holding the first value, okay, shift left. Okay, how many places? Four places we need to shift. Okay, so that we can target for the next uh, uh, byte exactly. Okay, we need to target the next byte. We need to read the second value. Okay, first value we already read. It is available in the S. Now, we need to go for one more value. Okay, so now, just observe. Uh, we need to go for again the read operation to read the second character, same procedure involved. Okay, now the accumulator will be consisting of uh, the second character exactly. Okay, so we are trying to add these two values. What are those values? The value what you had in uh, S. Okay, first read operation, the value is available in S. Second read operation, the value is available in A exactly. Convert two digits into byte. Okay, so whatever the value we are having in S, whatever the value you have in the A, both should be added, okay, both should, both of the register, both should be added, okay, so then later, we'll be getting what, we'll be getting a one byte result exactly, when you are adding two values, you will be getting one byte result, see, just observe, uh, we are trying to get 0 to 9, then 10 to 15 exactly, is it right, okay, 0 to 9, 10 to 15 exactly, okay, so here, uh, one byte is more than enough, okay, to represent them exactly, fine, okay, then now, Observe here, after getting the particular one byte information, one byte information, so that will be, uh, that should be stored exactly. So here, store character, okay, zero comma x, zero comma x means we need to store the result, okay, one byte of information, whatever we are generating, right, okay, that byte, okay, should be stored in some location. What is that location? X exactly. What does x stand for? X stand for the index, okay, x is targeting for uh, location 80. X is targeting for location 80 exactly. Yeah. So now, next fix register we are having. Okay. So here we are using uh, both the index register. Okay. Uh, it don't create any problem over here. We need to add one for the value of X. One for value of X exactly. What is the value of X right now? 80 exactly. So 80 plus 1, it will become 81. So after adding that, you'll be targeting for 81 now. Then again, same procedure continues. We are jumping loop. So you're coming back over there. Then jump to subroutine, what is that get C? So you'll be trying to uh, read the next value exactly. Read the next value exactly. Continuously, it will be incremented. Okay, Such, so that we can, like, when we are trying to find the end of the uh, file, okay, then we are coming back to the uh, starting position and again the execution takes place exactly. So this is how your bootstrap loader used to work with that. Okay, fine. Then, uh, next we'll go for uh, the working of bootstrap loader is shown as below. Okay, the bootstrap loader is usually uh, present in raw. Okay, it is stored at address zero, and it is executed once the system is on or restarted. Okay, so it reads the operating system program instruction one by one from the input device identified by F1. That is nothing but the hard disk. Okay, here input device is hard disk, and it is identified by the code F1, and we start. Uh, story from address uh, 80 onwards. So, from uh, in the main memory, okay, we are having the location called as 80. 
from 80, it will start storing the content of the bit. Then each byte of object code uh, to be loaded is read from the input device F1. Okay, as uh, two hexadecimal digits, uh, just as it is a text record of a SIP object program. So we need to read two different characters and we need to merge it as a single, okay, single value, okay, single byte information exactly. Okay, then later it should be stored in uh, 80, 81, like that. Okay. Okay, much of the uh, work of the bootstrap loader is performed by the supporting get C. Okay, get C is used to read a character and convert into hexadecimal digit. Okay, it is invoked twice in the main program and uh, two characters are converted into a single byte. The resulting byte is stored at the address currently uh, in register X using store CH instruction that refer to location uh, zero using index addressing it. Then uh, the fix instruction is uh, then use it to add one to the value in X. After all the object code from device F1 has been loaded, the bootstrap jump to address 80, okay, which uh, begins the execution of the operators. Okay, so uh, the so concept is very simple. Uh, see here, we are having bootstrap loader inside the ROM, okay, at a location called as zero. From that, from zero, it will be having the complete instruction. So, uh, whenever we turn on our system, Fine. The operating system which is residing in the hard disk, it should be brought to a main memory from location 80. Okay, so each and every memory location, uh, we need to store it uh, by one byte of information. Yeah, on only one byte of information we need to store. At the time, we are reading uh, two different characters, it should be converted to a uh, hexadecimal. Okay, then later both should be added. Fine, and we need to convert or uh, we need to get one byte information over here. Fine. Okay, after getting the one byte information, it should be stored uh, sequentially like 80, 81, 82, suspect. Okay, uh, that's it. When we are reaching the end of the file, okay, from the uh, hard disk, okay, means operating system file, when we are reaching the end, your uh, bootstrap loader will jump to location 80. Then the execution takes place from 80 to end of the file. So this is how the bootstrap loader needs to work. Okay, so this is it from our students. So we'll meet with uh, next. Uh, topic that is machine dependent loaders, okay, machine dependent features of loader and machine independent uh, features of loader. Okay, that we will uh, see in next class. Thank you, students.